Welcome to Spitbucket. We're back with Rosé. Long live the revolution. We've got four completely different wines for you today, uh, but there's a similarity in that they're all looking to make high quality, the dry, savoury styles. Although one we're not so sure about. One's a bit of a punt. Uh, and that's this fella, the Crawford uh, River. We don't know much about that, but we'll find out. First up, this is rare. In fact, when we found this, we emailed, uh, it's made by uh, two young guys, Tom Schobrock and Anton Van Klopper. It's called the Rosato de Nebbiolo. It's from uh, 2009, it's 30 bucks. We emailed, I could find nothing about it and hadn't seen it before. We emailed Tom and said, uh, what can you tell us? He was stunned that we'd even managed to find a bottle. It's so, it's so hard to find. Nebbiolo, um, I mean, that's the wonderful, wonderful grape from uh, Piedmont that makes Barolos uh, uh, in particular. They're just some of the greatest wines in the world. But there's quite a few Aussies doing it as a rosé style. Uh, I suspect a little bit of that is waiting until the grapes, uh, the vines, get enough age that they can make serious Nebbiolo. And until then, maybe they're doing this. Maybe not. Maybe that's the design. Adelaide Hills wine. The only initial problem I had, it's under a DM cork. I'm not sure why you wouldn't go screw cap with rosé. It would seem completely logical to me, but anyway. Now, you, as you, hopefully you can see the colour against this black background. Um, it's an orangey, lovely orange, orangey red, pale orangey red. Uh, oh, and it's got that sort of sour cherry spice. Whew. It's been made, we know from Tom, in a, in a very oxidative manner. So he says the possible sherry hints, sherry-like hints. Um, and you could say perhaps, but it's certainly nothing intrusive. Lovely nose. Just a touch of nettle, um, but that cherry, florals. It's as clean as you can imagine. It's just absolutely refreshing, utterly, utterly and totally refreshing, clean style. That is absolutely. If I didn't have to go and jump on the stumbling wombat, that would be coming with me. The stumbling wombat apparently um, might do. They're probably too busy blowing, blowing up engines to notice. Um, we'll move on. And there you go a sponsor. Um, sorry. <laughs> now, oh gosh, that's lovely. Um, I'm sorry to leave that. That's just a terrific wine. We're moving on. And we're moving to Steve Pannell's Rosé Arido from 2009. Now, these days you'd almost be looking for 2010 rosés. Just, that, just put a tiny bit in your glass to rinse if you're using one glass to go through. Put a tiny bit in, rinse it around, tip it out, and uh, that just gets rid of the previous wine to make sure you're uh, tasting the new wine, and a little bit of the next wine works far better than uh, water. Although at one cellar door I went to once, they put in a tiny bit which I thought was to wash out the glass. I went like that and tipped it out, and the bloke looked at me and said, why the hell did you tip out my wine? I thought, God, if, you, know, you wouldn't have been able to taste what he served. Anyway, this is made from Grenache, or Grenache, as, uh, as the Spanish call it. 36 hours on skins to get the colour. Uh, $29, so similar price. Much more of a sort of a neon pink colour here. It's much brighter. Sort of that dry herb character. Dry herb, almost lollipop uh, spice. Mm. It's got really nice, bright, vibrant flavours. Um, it doesn't have the same length as the first one, um, but it's, it's, it's more of a flavours explode up front. That, that first one just had that beautiful long length. Um, that is a delicious summer drink. Chill it, obviously chill all these, um, and away you go. Easy to drink. This one I have, it's, it's, I've not seen a Crawford River Rosé before. This is the 2010. Um, I'm not even sure, I think it's around about $24. Uh, that's a bit of a guess. I can't tell you the, the variety, I can't tell you the style as yet, um, because we, we, there's no information about it. We just, you're wondering why we bothered. Well, because Crawford River makes some terrific wine, and I thought if they're giving Rosé a go, it's definitely worth giving them a go. 
I should put that back there, shouldn't I? So we've, we've got all the soldiers lined up and happy. Okay, well, we're back to a much paler salmon colour here, much lighter colour. And it's a very subtle sort of gentle aroma. Flesh, f not flesh floral. <laughs> Say that after the third bottle. Fresh florals. Mm. Mm. That's bright, clean acidity. It's, it's really got nice zippy, zippy touch. It's with these guys, you'd expect they'd make a rosé of, of top-notch quality, and that—that that is, that's—it's uh, got a lovely clean, cleansing sort of finish. There's no, there's no sort of mawkish sweetness hangs around or anything. That just cleans things up. These are sort of styles are ideal aperitifs. They're also ideal. I mean, Sunday afternoon lunch, outdoors somewhere at a, at a restaurant or a picnic or whatever. How on earth can you go? But why they haven't had? Uh, I mean, the revolution has been too long in coming. Mm. That's just an absolutely refreshing style. Now, for those of you who did see our little session um, uh, earlier with um, Andrew Campbell, uh, we mentioned uh, Domain Tempia from Bandol, and that's, uh, I know Steve Weber from Debortz, that's uh, a favour of his and what he aspires to, and that's indeed, I suspect, one of the wines that's been behind this entire uh, rosé revolution and I know that uh, from talking to Steve when he goes over to uh, France uh, they like nothing more than uh, finding them the, the restaurant in southern France and ordering a couple of bottles of the Domaine Tempier and um, having a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon as opposed to the rest of us of course hate that sort of thing now um, hang on a minute we've got to get rid of that having said all that about Domaine Tempier they didn't have any they'd sold out I suspect Steve so We've got probably the next best thing, Domaine du Gros Nord, and forgive the uh, pronunciation. Uh, it's a 2008, it's from Bandol. These guys are seriously good producers of uh, a number of, of, of red wines, and uh, I have tried this before actually over in, um, in France, and uh, I thought it was delicious. Uh, $55 here, much less in France, big surprise. Um, so you're, you're talking about a serious wine if you if you want to have a look at it. Again, you've got that very pale hint of orange, salmon sam, salmon flesh colour. That sort of nettles and herbs. You can almost sort of imagine wandering through a, an orchard somewhere in the south of France with a little bit of a wind blowing, all the the, uh, the floral characters. Mm. Bone dry, or certainly gives the appearance of a bone dry finish. Um, it's got terrific length, it's nice, nicely balanced, it's cl again clean and refreshing. Absolutely just re such a refreshing style of wine. Um, here we are outdoors, they are perfect. Now, you don't have to go the $55 route, um, although if you want to see what the real thing, the wines that started this are like, certainly give them a shot. These are all delicious delicious styles, um, and you're probably going to pay, we looked earlier at some of the Debortz, uh, so you're paying between $20 and $30, which for a fantastic bottle of wine is, you know, that's not too bad. Um, if I just may, so before we sign off, before Swig comes out and gets his hands on this and I never see it again. Righto, just running through them quickly. You look, you've got a lovely one. That to me, that's a nice, that's a 91 that, uh, at 55 bucks. You're not talking great value, but you're talking a, a fascinating and delicious wine. That, uh, I'd give that, uh, uh, that's another 90. That's, it is 23, not 24 apparently, I'm told. Uh, it's, it's, again, that just, the same story runs through the whole lot. This fella, uh, 89, um, lots of delicious flavours exploding up front particularly. This one, 93, that's my favourite. I just think that, unfortunately, of course, uh, finding it's going to be uh, uh, an interesting experience. Uh, 
Um, from memory, that was the only one in the bottle store that we, where we got it, so uh, good luck. Uh, but if you do, grab one and enjoy it, because it's just a delicious wine. Long live the revolution. Reporting here from the front, as it were, may we say that we're delighted that it's finally taken place. It's been too long in coming, and now we're seeing some absolutely fantastic wines coming through, and hopefully that will continue. Uh, remember, on the 30th of November, or 31st if you swig, people will be tweeting about the, uh, the various rosés they're trying. Uh, if you're at the Gabba, you're forgiven. Otherwise, get out there and try some rosés. Let us know what you think of rosés. What ones are you enjoying? Uh, what, do you, what do you drink them with? Uh, any thoughts, comments, queries? Let us know here at Spitbucket. May I just say, from Spitbucket, we spit so you don't have to. Cheers. Cheers.